If you've just joined us, the show is still Good Morning Abuja. Seated right here in the studio is Daniel Bowman, and we will be discussing children living with life-limiting conditions. Welcome on the program, Daniel Bowman. Thank you for having me. All right. So um, you work with children with limiting conditions. Can you explain to us what exactly this is all about? Okay, first of all, let me give a definition of my organization. Okay. I am the operations manager at the Brain and Body Foundation okay. here in Nigeria. And we are a charity-based organization in Nigeria and in the United States. Okay. And over the years, we've been able to provide for free, you know, consultation, medical assistance and support for children. When we say life-limiting conditions, we're talking about cases like autism, cerebral palsy, if you're on the neurological disorder spectrum now. Okay. Um, you know, even cases like seizure and speech problems. Okay. And in recent times, uh, over the past 24 months, we have uh, sort of enhanced our focus on sickle cell disease, okay. which is seriously ravaging Africa. And Nigeria is on top of the epidemiology list of SED in Africa. So that is our focus so far. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have a statistical data as to how many children in Nigeria are possibly living with these conditions? Well, for the neurological disorders, um, I would say that for most part, we cannot categori categorically say that these are the numbers. Okay. But for sickle cell disease, Nigeria accounts for over 150,000 children, newborns, living with sickle cell disease. That is 33% of the go global burden of sickle cell disease. and. We know that this is something that is mostly even most often neglected. So Brain and Body Foundation is doing its best to make sure that we provide, you know, care for these children, which is um, our core value. Care stands for charity, advocacy, research and education. Okay. So with this four put together, we are trying our best to see how we can get the word out there to so many people not just the ones living with sickle cell disease, but also those with neurological disorders. But because one thing we've realized is a lot of people are not educated okay. about these conditions. Okay. So if you're a parent even with a child living with, with, a, with autism or cerebral palsy or Down syndrome, you know, they don't, they don't even know how to handle the situation. Yeah. So even with sickle cell, we found that there's a bias, you know, even with parents who have these kids, they are easily condemned. Most of the parents feel like they are, you know, um, unfortunate to bear such a child. So what we're doing at the foundation is to see how not just providing medical assistance, okay. but also educate these parents and provide them free consultation, which comes with counseling, letting them know that, you know, their child can have a better life. Okay. Yeah. I, I am actually surprised to hear that. I'm now that's talking about a uh, sickle cell. I'm surprised to hear that that huge number of children are still being born with uh, the sickle cell disease. I know that a lot of advocacy have, has, has there, there has been a lot of advocacy uh, going to the grassroots to tell people, okay, this is it, this is it. How comes, is it that it doesn't, the, the advocacy and the education, the awareness doesn't get to the people it's supposed to get to? Well, you know, why do we have, why do we still have that large number? Well, mostly because like from our practice, what we've learned in our clinic is that a lot of these parents that give birth to these children um, live in areas where they are not exposed okay. to education. Okay. They are lots of their majority are in the remote axis okay. of society. Okay. They are not exposed to tele technology like TV. Most of this information doesn't even get to the radio okay. anymore. It's mostly online on the internet. So when they come into the, the foundation, when they come into our clinic, it's a is a complete um, lecture again we have to give them because they don't even know what their child has so most part of it is the fact that education is not done enough so we're also advocating adv advocating for change okay. at the same time okay. trying to put the word out there okay. so that a lot of people are aware of the the issue that's why we're clamoring for more genotype testing okay. in the case of sickle cell disease um, how parents uh, future parents can be careful you know know what your genotype is so that when you look to having children in the future you should know the outcome if you if you go against you know the the right thing to do which is not to if you have the as trait you shouldn't be planning to have kids with someone else who has the as trait because the likelihood of giving birth to a child with sickle cell is it's definitely high. there okay in your experience what are the things that parents and caregivers do that is a no-no when caring for their children and words well, I would say, like, from lessons learned in the clinic, um, we, found case, we found cases where parents coming and the children are neglected. Okay. There's, there's almost like 
a tiredness. They're exhausted about the situation. Most of the mothers are, at the time where they're still pregnant, you know, they are not managing their nutrition well. It's almost as though they, they just are careless about certain things, which leads to future complications. So we're also encouraging mothers, pregnant mothers, and those who are nursing as well, to be very careful to be you know to guard their bodies against infection because most of these cases start from infection you know correlation is not causation you know but at the same time we have to know that mothers who are who give birth to these kids it starts from infection it starts from poor nutrition even the babies are infected and that could trigger you know challenges with the brain and so many other things that could occur after that point you know just yesterday i was having a conversation with someone and he said he has 10 children and the 10 children uh, being born in his house none of his wives went for antenatal wow. and the children are, 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 are in good health and he doesn't think it is necessary what he told me in his words he said it is our type that go for antenatal what what kind of awareness how do you think such people can be reached well you see the truth is uh, i would say it takes more than one person to do this job it takes a whole nation, it takes every individual to be aware that the, the life of your child is very important, especially as a parent, especially when you're thinking about having children. Yes, he's fortunate to have 10 of them in good health, but that could not be the case for somebody else. Yes. Why we encourage antenatal is because you just might not know what might occur. So your frequent checkup in the hospital helps you as a mother better prepare for your child when it's time for delivery. So please, if you're out there, consider antenatal. It is very, very important. Yes, it yeah. is. It can't be overly emphasized. Yes. Yeah. And I don't think it is for a particular class of people because no. he told me it is for us. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, right. And that also adds to the fact that whenever I just talk about education, yeah. you know, he's not exposed to the fact that there's no, there's no such thing as us, and, you know. So we, it's for everybody. It and is. as much as yes, it's not easily accessible because we also realize that poverty is a big issue is why these kids also have these problems you know they don't have enough um they're financially burdened so you can't even see somebody who is not with enough money go to the hospital because the medication or the routine checkup is expensive mm. you know in 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 nigeria here very few people even in our clinics they come in they've given birth in churches marks uh in there there's a midwife around their area that's where they give birth mm. you know yes, nobody yes. actually goes to a proper hospital mm. so that's the challenge okay as an organization how do you approach the long-term uh care of these children well let me answer this uh, first by saying that in more developed countries yes you know advances in you know diagnostic techniques has helped characterization and definition of diseases and disorders but also we found out in the Brain and Body Foundation clinic that, you know, you, with the therapeutic practices and because everything we give them are nutrients that helps, you know, brain development, okay. that helps to repair tissue damage and build and improve their quality of life. Okay. Now, we found that we found significant improvements with these children over the years okay. who have been taking the nutrients we've been giving them, okay. you know, and currently now in the pot. Because we're addressing sickle cell disease, like I said earlier, mm, yeah. and our and our end game with sickle cell disease is to reduce the number of children, the mortality rate of children, you know, dying before the age of five, living with sickle cell disease, okay. from seven five percent to less than ten percent by 2025. Okay. So it's a big plan, and to tackle this number of 150 children being born every year is not easy. Mm. So what the Brain and Body Foundation is doing is to see how we can provide supplements. Okay. Now, like I said, we have over 25,000 bottles that have just arrived okay. with a combination of vitamin C, D, and zinc. Okay. Yes, and over the years, we've been using this same combination for children living with sickle cell disease, and we've found tremendous improvements. Okay. We've had so many children not have crisis okay. for more than 12 months. Okay. Over, some of them are even, uh, when they came into the clinic, they were complaining about eyesight problems. There's, we have a, a volunteer who also happens to have sickle cell disease, he's no longer using his eyeglasses. He used to have issues with his sight okay. and he's not had crisis in a long time. So you find that these supplements, these nutrients are working and we're advocating that the government would endorse our work. We've actually been mandated by the federal government okay. to go on with this practice and see how we can improve more lives 
with children living with sickle cell disease okay. and neurological disorders as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving us an insight into the work you do. And wow, you're yeah. doing a lot. Well done. Thank you. Thank so you for coming uh, on the program. Just, just to add quickly, um, okay. if we're also calling for you know volunteers who would like to help our work. Okay. So if you're interested in helping out the foundation, you okay. can find us at brainandbodyfoundation.org forward slash volunteer. Okay. Or you can send a message to 80 right. Thank you. All right. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you very much. We have been conversing with Daniel Bowman and we've spoken about children living with life limiting conditions and they're doing such a great job. Now